have a unique focus on inflammatory testing. Most of the other heart labs out there or advanced um, cardiovascular risk assessment strategies are focused on cholesterol or certain forms of cholesterol or certain states that the cholesterol's in, oxidized, rotted, necrotic, things of that nature. We have a pure focus on inflammatory proteins. Not that we don't offer some of those other tests, but what we recognize and educate on is the importance of inflammatory markers for the assessment, risk assessment of patients for cardiovascular disease. So I think it gives us a real ability to educate and a specific focus that most physicians were certainly not exposed to at all in medical school, may have heard about in the literature, but still have questions and trying to understand how to bring that forward in their practice. And that exclusive focus really gives us that ability to educate physicians and also makes us the place physicians seek to learn about inflammatory markers. The late Russell Ross put forth the response to injury hypothesis of atherosclerosis actually in 1976. And what Dr. Ross said was that cholesterol causes the injury, but inflammation is the response that leads to the event. And we literally have spent 30 to 35 years focusing on cholesterol. And we've really impacted the disease significantly with the number of, you know, what we call ST elevation myocardial infarctions, what patients call the big one. Uh, are down by 70% in the last 10 years. So we've really significantly impacted the disease. But what we now recognize with a lot of people with, again, treated to or natural low cholesterol levels, to further figure out if they still have risk, you have to go to the second leg of Dr. Ross's hypothesis, which is really inflammation. So inflammation testing has been around for about 10 years in the cardiovascular space, really initially brought forth by Paul Ritker at uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. And he really has done a wonderful job showing the importance of a, one of our markers called high sensitivity CRP. But we've now married that marker with several others to again, not only just tell us whether the patient has risk, but where they are on that risk spectrum. You know, to have blood testing and urine testing and to be able to get the depth of insight that we're able to get on what's going on in the blood vessels is really uh, revolutionary and important. And it really is giving us, again, this deep assessment of where the patient is without really having to invade the body and either do a cardiac catheterization, no radiations involved, which would be a calcium score. Um, intravascular ultrasound, again, still requires people to undergo catheterization. So it really does give us important information. And again, it doesn't mean you should run off to the cardiologist and have a catheterization if, you're, if your uh, values are abnormal, but it does mean that you should get serious about your risk factors and serious about controlling your blood pressure, controlling your cholesterol, and again, looking for other areas in the body that might be driving systemic inflammation. Blood testing can be followed, and you can measure whether you're actually impacting your risk of disease by repeating the blood test. It's hard to do that with repeat imaging because they're uh, a little bit more expensive, they're more technique-driven, and in the case of calcium scoring, there's radiation involved. So um, I think there is a very reasonable strategy to start initially with an assessment of imaging and then biologics based on blood, and then following the blood testing over time. What's exciting from my point of view is the education that we've been able to put out there that has really fostered our growth. It's not that we're out there pushing testing, but we're out there really um, trying to educate the physicians and the patients to understand that just measuring cholesterol in your patient doesn't tell you what your total risk in that patient is. And, you know, as a cardiologist, I've certainly uh, experienced many a patient who, you know, couple weeks prior were patted on the back and their doc said, oh good, your risk is low. In fact, I was thinking even this morning, a patient who had a, an LDL, a bad cholesterol level of 30, 
a goal being under 100, and a HDL, a bad, a good cholesterol, in the about 18, we would like that to be higher. This person had a heart attack last night. You know, and it's hard to say that any cholesterol measurement in that patient would really predict his risk or her risk, um, but inflammatory markers uh, certainly could. So it's that education piece that's been particularly exciting. Thank you.